Wow, this beast is called the Eastern Emperor Moth, binomial name Rinaka Boisdu Valley. This incredible species is found in the Russian Far East, but also Northeast China, North and South Korea, and small parts of Northern Mongolia. This woodland species is easy to breed in captivity, and today I will tell you a short story of how I managed to breed these amazing beasts. Of course it all starts with the eggs. The eggs of this species must be refrigerated for several months. Because the eggs of this species hibernate. After storing them cold, warm them up to room temperature. From that, tiny black babies will hatch. They can feed on many plants. Some suggestions to use are cherry, Hawthorn, oak tree, willow, sweet gum, birch tree, hazel, apple, pear, or walnut. I decided to use European bird cherry or Prunus padis. It's perfectly doable to raise them in small plastic boxes. Just make sure to keep the food fresh and replace it often. Just look at them. They're quite interesting even in the early stages if you ask me. Fascinating. As they grow bigger, they do need to be placed in larger enclosures. Place fresh cuttings of cherry, willow, oak tree, sweet gum, birch or other plants in there. I prefer to use cherry myself. In a short time the larvae become kinda colorful. They are lime, almost neon green and quite hairy. I think the caterpillars of this species are just amazing. Well, the caterpillars of every moth species are amazing in their own ways, but these are truly special to me. Just look at how awesome they look. This species can grow really quickly. Any person who is capable of breeding them will confirm this. Generally speaking, although there are exceptions, Rinaka species are fast growing for their size. Use moderate temperatures and moderate humidity. Avoid any extremes. And eventually they spin papery brown cocoons with holes in them. Typical for this genus of emperor moths. Although the genus keeps changing, they are Rinaka now, but before that they used to be Caligula and before that they were Saturnia. Taxonomy keeps changing. Collect all the cocoons one by one. The good news is that the cocoons of this moth species always eclose the very same year. There is no need for any fancy hibernation. The moths always come out late summer or early autumn. Just place them on room temperature indoors and keep them mildly humid. And before you know, the moths will eat close. Here it is. Moths of this genus are quite active. If you touch them, they want to fly away instantly. They seem more sensitive to stress than other species of silk moth that I have studied. So be careful, they won't hesitate to fly away from you. The female of this species is incredibly gorgeous. She looks like a renaissance painting. Look at the incredible colors on this moth. It is simply mesmerizing and mind-blowing. My gosh. Females have a thicker, fatter abdomen and lighter colors than the males. It's easy to tell them apart in all honesty. In comparison, this is what the male looks like. They have softer colors. And sometimes they have silvery, grayish or even pink undertones. This one here is blushing. It seems to be one of the more pink forms that exist. It is quite challenging to get close-ups of these moths since it is a very nervous species. Matings should be simple in theory. Just leave them outdoors in a net cage. Exposed to natural darkness, natural airflow and temperatures. Next morning, if the moths look like this, you know they have mated. Males and females are attached to each other by their abdomens. Once you see this, you will know the eggs will be fertile. Eventually the moths will lay many eggs in captivity. All you have to do is to gather them up in a container. The eggs of this species hibernate, so place them in a refrigerator. The eggs of this species must hibernate. And that is how I managed to raise many individuals of this gorgeous species. What a beauty. It's not a very difficult species at all to breed, to be honest. It is beginner friendly 
and in the moth breeding community. It is not a super difficult species to obtain. Thank you for watching my channel. I'm glad to have an audience like you that shares their interest in my work. Subscribe to my channel. I have thousands of butterfly and moth videos waiting for you.